Welcome, Welcome to the Moisty Voice episode 30... Balls. Five, seven? Seven. Five? Six. I thought we were on 35. I got $10 on seven. Okay, $10 no, on seven. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not wagering. Mm-mm. I got some Jack Link's beef jerky on seven. Oh, I've got um, some Buffalo Wild Wings on six. Shit, and... he stepped it up. Yeah, that was... I'll that was... call you on those wings. Wait, what did you say it was, six? Yeah. Yeah, I'll call you on those wings. Oh, well, yeah, it's... It's, it's 37. 37! Woo! Free wings! You got wings. No, you get Buffalo Wild Wing. Oh yeah, free wing. <laughs> Next time we go there, I get to take one of your wings. Yep. But uh, yeah, this is the long-awaited, for us at least, uh, Goatee Podcast, Game of the Year 2017. Moisty Boys Goatee Cast. Last year we were oh, drunk. We don't have vodka. This year we're not drunk. It's not a vodcast because you're driving afterwards. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could get drunk, and Nick could maybe drink, but he also works. Me. Eh. For those of you watching, check out check out that. I'm proud of it. She's Shut very the fuck proud up. of it. I'm it's very nice proud stand. of it. For all of you audio listeners, I, I just I'm very proud of minute things that we should have had the whole time. He's just laughing vigorously at the new mic stand. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, let's give a rundown of our categories. Uh, so what do we have to look forward to, Connor? Well, uh, last year we started with just the top goatee list. So do we want to keep keep in line with that? Yeah, so we're, we're going to go through our uh, top three games of the year. All right, we have uh, our top, our personal top, top three, three games of 2017. That uh, To give some context here... We have outlawed any remasters, remakes, or re-releases. And just additional DLCs. That is not in the discussion, and that is not true. Oh, well, then... on Connor's calling it. I've got a thing... Uh, well, that makes a difference, then. It's okay, we don't follow our own rules. We follow our own rules, that was not a set rule. Anyway, then after that, we're gonna have our... You know, what we think is, in our professional opinions, the game of the year. Just the, the like... It's undeniably goaty. Last year was Dark Souls three. A Which, lot of people will probably agree with that. It deserved it. Uh, we have a whole lot of competition. If you say Overwatch, uh, feel free to fucking kill yourself. I killed myself last year. Yep. Uh, then we're gonna have single player, multiplayer, uh, the best soundtrack, best soundtrack, best soundtrack. score, and then we're Biggest also gonna No have... Man's Sky. Yeah. So last year, worst game of the year was No Man's Sky. Or biggest letdown that was also just god awfully terrible. It, it encompasses a lot. So instead of saying worst slash biggest disappointment, and then all of us picking No Man's Sky, we've just titled it No Man's Sky Award. So um, there's a couple contenders for that right now. There's a lot this year. There, that, there's Last a, year was easy. I'm willing to wager I know exactly what Michael's in. I there, there's actually three, but I've had to drop it down to two. And whichever one you don't say, I'll say the other. I'm positive you're not my the one I'm saying isn't one of your two. Oh, and then uh, after that we've got our most anticipated game of 2018. So with that, let's get into it. All right, personal top three, starting with the third position. Michael, what is your number three game of 2017? Is that one game where William of Astora goes to Japan and just crushes Demon Puss? Oh, Neo. Yep. Huh. You've got it higher. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. Because I, I didn't play no weeb shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good weeb shit this year. No, but so, Neo, a great game. You play as a British man, a burly British man, who then no, goes... No, you're not British. You're uh, Scottish Welsh. or Irish. Yeah, Welsh. You're Welsh, and that's where you got your spirit, and she's amazing. And then well, you get, Mr. You to... Evil, the evil man, steals her to go hunt down more evil spirit money. It's very rude. Yeah, no, basically... Your spirit can find spirit dollars that just out in the wild in chunks. Spirit and guy cash. wants I want the chunks of your your spirit money. I I'm gonna just go steal your waifu, your soul waifu, and she's go pretty trace great. off to Japan. She like is for pretty a spirit, great. She's really cute. Yeah, but uh, a lot of people and I every time I bring this game up, first thing I hear isn't it just a Japanese skinned Dark Souls? No. no. Fuck off. It's dramatically right, right. different, and I'm gonna no, let you two take the platform. No, for it. but yes, it's one the base design and mechanically just the gameplay of the game is Dark Souls, 
and that you will kill enemies. You will gain essence in Dark Souls. It is called Souls, mm -hmm. and this is called Amrita. You will gain that, and you lose it if you do not spend it before you next die. When you lose it, it is dropped on the ground. If you die again before you're gaining it, it is lost. That is the base core mechanic of Dark Souls. That is what drives that series, and that is what drives Neo. I would also say Dark Souls is heavily on... The combat system is learning patterns, memorizing them, oh, yeah. and predicting them. No, no, there's definitely more to Dark Souls, but the number one core element is that. I always thought that Neo... was the most Dark Souls thing about it, was the, the combat is in... It's so specific that that is how you fight in that it's game. It's like the way the camera looks, the stamina management, the way that moves are played out. It's a very... Like, the, the one thing that I'll say is, like, you don't really get different movesets for each weapon... For each, like, different axe or different sword you put on, you don't get a new moveset. You get new movesets just by leveling up your character and deciding, I want this Each move. weapon is its own skill tree yeah. that you get to upgrade. Changing weapons, sometimes they have unique skills, but mostly it's a stat differential. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Neo kind of... But... Isn't the first game to start the Is Soulsborne a genre discussion, but it no. really kind of picked up steam with it. And then the Surge also kind of like a sci-fi yeah. Soulsborne... Um, there's a lot of different stuff like that, but I think Neo is where we really started I'd having that conversation. I'd say Neo is to RPGs what Dark Souls is to character action. Hmm. You've two played it a hell of a lot more than I did, so I'm sitting out the bulk of the conversation. It's mainly just like what's different. What what is if you were to tell someone two differences between Neo and Dark Souls? You what can would fucking be? cheese Neo. <laughs> You can cheese Dark Souls. Not to the fucking ascent, you cheese Neo. Literally, Neo breaks down to you can either have no good weapons. Either you have the bear or you're not playing it right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not Wasn't even. Wasn't there also. No, I'm thinking Dark Souls with the broken ass swords. Yeah, it had a broken sword in Dark Souls. But, like, in Neo, there was a spirit. An There's an item called the Spirit Talisman that if you spec into, like, a certain. A bit, like, leveling's tree. You can have like six of them every single time you spawn. Basically That's what you do bears. is you then throw out your spirit animal as a weapon. And there's a bear spirit animal that also works alongside my favorite armor set, my favorite weapons in the fucking game. And it just kind of goes fucking crazy on people. It knocks, it does a hard knockdown, a stun, and it also just outright... It does a shit ton of damage. Do they do multiplayer similarly? I never played it no, uh, outside of the beta. No, for the it's, multi. it's actually done very differently. It's entirely different multiplayer. There's no PvP. There, you can fight like summon soul versions of people, mm -hmm. and it's AI, and the mm -hmm. AI is not that great. And it's however they were as they died. Yeah. So whatever gear they were wearing, and if you kill them, there's a chance that they drop that gear. So basically, PvP is used to farm other people's gear. Yeah, I much prefer the PvP in Neo. It, non-existent. Because I play Dark Souls a, as a PvE. Yeah. I find that's the best way to enjoy the game. A lot of people like the PvP, which is nice, but it's lag souls, and one person does always get, get fucked. Mm -hmm. yeah, because so FromSoft never realized how to make servers. I, I'd say that Neo is better single player than Dark Souls. Yes. Mm, yes, than Dark Souls. Yeah. But well, if you're talking from soft in general, I think no. Bloodborne. Uh, oh, yeah. uh. So and if we're gonna talk about FromSoft's best PvP, we're talking about fucking Armor Core. We're not. No one's talking about your Transformers. I'm I'm talking about them. I want to keep talking about them. More Michael keeps them alive. So go ahead. If I keep talking about it, it won't die. It's Tra dead. The servers are down. It Shadows died twice. Moving on. In any on. case, that was Michael's number three, Neo. Mm -hmm. So uh, Nick's number three, he uh, he didn't pay attention to to that rule about the no remakes, remasters, and sequels because I picked 1.5, 2.5. Beat your ass. Well, you got to pick a new one. So I got to pick a new one. Uh, I will say 1.5, 2.5, fantastic. No, so if, spectacularly if we were done. counting those, that would have been my number two yeah. or number one. Well, um, yeah, you can you you know I would mine would have been up there fucking because I hundred percented it almost twice, yeah. once for me and once for Connor. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick off the top of my head. Let's go with P5. I'm gonna put it a little lower than I should. Because um, finished it. But this is my flex spot, so P5, Persona Five, uh, which I'm sure is Michael's two or one. So he'll gush on that momentarily. I feel like it's his two. Uh, 
Connor, what's your number three? Um, you're just leaving all the talking to us, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm yes, well, my number three was Horizon Zero Dawn. Fair. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of great game releases this year, IMO. I didn't think that there was anything like spec fucking tacular. <laughs> what? You're getting flipped way off by Michael over there. Because weeb shit is bad shit. <laughs> Shit. If I had had the time, I probably would have dumped a lot more gameplay into a lot more stuff because I think a lot of good shit came out. Indie was it was a great year for indie games. Yeah. Um, not a whole terrible amount of AAA unless you were really into franchises. Um, you know, Assassin's Creed Origin I hear is like one of the best ones yet, and uh, there's some good stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I, I would definitely say that. As far as AAA new properties go, bit of not a weird a whole year. Lot. Yeah. Bit of a weird year, yeah. Yeah. Um, Joe's Horizon Zero Dawn, and I'm not putting it higher. Some people might disagree with me on that. A lot of people, I think, really made the game out to be way better than it was, and it wasn't anything crazy special. It has no. its super fans, that's for sure. It has a lot of super fans, which is still strange to me. Like, it's a good game. It's got good combat mechanics. The story is actually really fucking drab and completely predictable from, like, minute one. Um, I actually, I saw the game, saw what its premise was, thought, oh, okay, this is what they're probably doing with it. Uh, well, my bad friend spoiled it for me, like, a week later, and it was one for one exactly what I thought it was gonna be. So, writing-wise, the story actually kind of sucks. The game isn't anything special. But it's a nice premise. The gameplay itself is really good, and it's a fun game. Like, I enjoyed playing it. And it got us... A new exclusive Monster Hunter. Hunter. It, and yeah, so that's we, really. Uh, it, it just fucking enough. seems like you go play the bow in Monster Hunter, and that's what a Horizon Zero Dawn seems to me. Which is why it flexes in so well to Monster Hunter. Yeah. Which, yeah, no, that was the vibe I got from watching, like, early on watching stuff for it. I was like, this is kind of Monster Hunter. It, it is Monster Hunter, yeah. Uh, but also had a lot more going for it. Had a lot more, like, story wise, but, you know, yeah, that didn't go far. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's a pretty good pick, though. Yeah. Uh, do you want to bounce straight back to your two, or do you want to move on um, to my yeah, two? Yeah, my two was right. Neo. That's not a respectable a, two. That's not a, a third spot. Two. Neo was a really, really good game. We talked about it already, but, like, the art style, amazing. The soundtrack was solid. The actual gameplay was very, very rewarding. We put a lot of time into that beta last year. It was... and the beta alone had so much gameplay. Michael and I played through a lot of the game. I got screwed on the beta because there was a certain stance that if you picked it, you could not dodge. And then, yeah, something it, it else... It locked you into a, um, um, a parry that if you didn't time it, you could not dodge. Something we didn't discuss is that, yeah, Dark Souls has a bunch of unique weapons that'll do stuff. And we said that Neo only has so many different types of weapons, and their skills are in trees. But every weapon is technically three weapons because you have three different stances at all times. And, and that was a really interesting feature because that changes entirely how you block, what you can block, how you attack, what attacks you're dealing out. It was sort of like it's, your long sword is now a short sword, is now a broad sword. It was, I, it was a lot of really cool stuff. I actually have a better way to describe it. It's just you have option selects for mid-combo. So you're doing a sword slash, you realize, oh... If I do a faster slash from one of the lower level stances, from one of the faster stances, I can get another slash in before I have to get the fuck out. Because a lot of the higher, like, basically the higher up you hold your weapon, the slower your moves are, but the higher damage it is, and mm -hmm. the lower and lower you do it, the, the faster your attacks are. There was also defensive buffs to different stances, too. Yeah, Some of them it, were better uh, for tanking. There were actually defensive buffs depending on where, like, the attack was coming in. Yeah. So, like, mid stance was better at blocking mid attacks, high stance was better at blocking high attacks, and it was really It added a weird. really nice layer. It was layer. a really good breath of fresh air, because I fucking love the combat. Mm -hmm. I okay. played the shit, I broke that fucking combat mm -hmm. down. It, it was expansive, and it was, yeah, it was unexpected. It was unexpected, and it gave me my favorite mechanic for a Souls thing. Bears. Which... The combat bear, and then just grabs. Yeah. Just straight up, you break someone's guard, you can grab them and throw them into a fucking wall or off a cliff if you're wielding an axe. Just right off the fucking cliff. Neo was good. Neo was oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my number two is kind of bouncing in between a couple, 
Um, and it's because I did not play enough fully, or I did not play either of them fully through. Um, one of them a lot less than the others. Uh, but Cuphead and Near Automata. Or Automata. I've, I've heard it both ways. I'm going to go with it, Automata, it, it, it's but it's Automata. probably... But yeah, so both of them just absolutely fantastic. Again, I did not put enough into Near to really speak to it. Um, I didn't it would probably it be Near if I had finished them fully. But I respect the shit out of Cuphead. Um, you know, for what you're getting, it is... Gameplay-wise, it's nothing insane. It's very retro. It's very sort of, I've played this, but I haven't quite played this. But it's not... You know how there's every indie game for the longest time was just 8-bit heroes doing 8-bit things. And yeah. it was all just boring as hell and stupid. This one is like retro done so painstakingly lovingly that i mean to hand animate every single thing you know they i love videos where they break down just a single attack from a boss and all and of the pieces that go into it the the terms 60 frames per second have never been realer than watching cuphead <laughs> but yeah no it's um it's just fantastic how much it rewards you in a way that games don't reward you anymore for playing smart, for actually, you know, losing to learn, you know, dying a couple of times uh, in the same way kind of Dark Souls does it, where, you know, you've got to, you know, get through a certain level and then the boss changes its attacks and then you have to die and you have to learn and you have to try again. Right. And it's a pain in the dick and it's kind of annoying, but it respects the player so much in that regard, uh, where it's like, we're going to annoy the bejesus out of you, but if you actually stop and think... Because it's not hard to play. Like, the controls are not clunky. It doesn't feel like, oh, I'm just haphazardly mashing around. Like, and that was my biggest concern when I saw that it was sort of arcadey. I was like, oh, man, it's just going to be a button mash. But, no, it is it is an impressive game. And I want them to do well because they deserve it. Whether or not you, like, think it's the greatest game ever, their efforts should be rewarded. Yeah. Great. I, I can agree to that. Um, but that is my number two. Okay. Personally, once I found out that we were fine with DLCs... We are not. You, Wait, you, you said, just said that! You said DLCs are good, punk. I'm just, I hate him. We got the tapes. We're good. No, we're good on yeah, DLCs. Okay. Okay. Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. God damn it. That's a fucking DLC, bitch. Let's take DLCs off. I mean, we should have seen this coming. It's technically a DLC. I still don't know if that counts, though. That's MMO a... expansions are... Alright, fine. Legion would have counted last year. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that's exactly what... Yeah. Yeah, that's ex I kept it off there because I wasn't sure if we were counting DLCs or not, and it's, that's exactly what that categorized under. That's a fucking DLC for Yep, that's fair. That is fair. It is fair. So yeah, it's a great game. It came out. It added two new DPS classes, but because fuck... Anything that's not a DPS, who says we need tanks or healers? Nobody likes support. In yeah, no, everybody like, hates that. And so then they also completely revamped a whole bunch of classes. They made Bard great again. They, yeah, it's exactly the sentence I've been using for that. Just make Bard great again. Could you alternatively not? <laughs> no. Unfortunately, when you have to stand still to shoot a bow and arrow rather than being able to jump around like a fucking loon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love I, walls. Yeah. It's a proven fact. But so accurate. it's a great game. They fixed a lot of problems, and so far they haven't really added many problems outside of people are still fucking dickheads who stand in fire and die. Oh, or I don't thought... stack. That sounds like a personal. Oh, it sounds like a personal problem. There's <laughs> one. There's one person that I know in particular who plays that game about fifteen fucking feet away from me most days, who just doesn't stand stack. in fire and dies. Yep. Yep. Don't stand in fire and die, folks. That's, uh, Smokey the Bear wants you to know, don't stand in fucking fire and die. Only you can prevent your own death in forest fires. Jesus. The firefighters won't no, help Jesus you. No, Jesus can't prevent that. <laughs> Jesus can't help you either. All right. Jesus can only walk on water, he can't walk through fire. Yeah, he looks yeah, at that and he's Jesus, like, Yeah, no. Jesus, where's the fire walking? It wasn't invented yet in his time, so, you know, in all uh, fairness. That makes sense. Um, so we'll... Just yeah, that, continue that's the pretty trend. much it. There's, Michael, I, I've already talked enough about this yeah. game. Yeah, yes, you have. Is. Over yep. this year. Oh, yeah. Uh, Michael, number one. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Persona fucking five. Yeah, okay, there we Persona go. Persona five, motherfuckers. <laughs> there it is. Yep. If you're not fucking your teacher during Persona five, you're not playing Persona five, right? 
I know. Go fuck your teacher. Go nah, fuck your teacher. I'm not gonna address that. You sh- you probably should. And you know how you should address it? By oh, playing the game and yeah. then going, Michael, I fucked my teacher. I call my teacher over in the evenings and she massages me. Massages me after I'm done with my uh, dungeons and I leave refreshed. I almost played it. I almost took Nick's copy and installed it. You should. It's a. Uh, you should. It's. I'm getting, I'm getting how many, how do you feel about dating some? Oh, how many, how hours? many hours did it take you to beat it? To beat it just, the first time. Just the first to beat it. Uh, I think I was sitting around 75, 80 hours for the first time, and then my slightly I fucked up my 100 percent run, and I am now at 99 percent. Oh right. And I, I have remember. to completely redo the game again. Yeah, because uh, it was a hundred. It was an extra uh, 30 to 40 hours of just completely burning through, not having to worry about any of the combat. Just okay. re-experiencing the game brand anew. I, for that alone, makes me enjoy it. Because too many games are too fucking short. That is my biggest gripe, like, half the time with games. Well, they have to make them short now. It's just they're way too short. Because it's all, you know, That's what expansion I'm this and microtransaction with... that, but... I'll save that for later, then, actually. Yeah. Um, That's, but yeah, a lot of games are too short. Michael could go on uh, Persona 5 for about six... He could go on it for almost as long as he could go on for FF14. So yeah. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna hop over to mine. And I don't think it's much of a surprise. But it's Breath of the Wild. Yeah, yep. uh, saw that coming. It is stellar. Easily the best game on the Switch. Um, is I'll there talk another about game the on other, the Switch? I'll talk about the other game on the Switch later. Because uh, it's in a weird category. But, no, I mean, been playing through it. Did not get it that long ago, but I've been putting as much free time into it as possible. Yeah, was, yeah that um, was a... The time he should be putting into it, he's putting into it. Yeah, it's a problem. But yeah, no, it's, um... I would say it's almost a little too open world sometimes. Oh, yeah, no, I... Um, especially if you're someone who has, like, uh, dungeon-completing tendencies, I guess. If, you, if you're in a dungeoning game, you're all about... There's the path that I know finishes the dungeon let me go do every other path first you, you it'll take a while if you do that with this game well there's, there's always there's so many one paths. big hidden treasure in every single dungeon mm. and then there's a lot, bunch of smaller things but yeah no it's it's a yeah, little I'm not even saying big hidden treasure is like the goal of the dungeon yeah there's always like a, su- a there's secret the objective or and then there's yeah a bunch of really powerful hidden shit um for example uh in the opening level in the tutorial stage which i think they did really well if not a little too long but the tutorial stage you can either find a notebook lying in a cabin and it'll tell you how to make this uh recipe and if you deliver this recipe to someone you get the clothing that lets you Uh, deal with warm weather or deal with cold weather alternatively if you just bring a bunch of food and you keep yourself alive because you take a half heart every like five seconds in the cold. If you just keep yourself alive and climb to the very top of the frozen snowy mountain, which takes a really long time, he'll say, you were impressive to come up here wearing just that. Here you go. And you can get it that way too. Yeah. There's... So there is, it's not like you can point, there's no pointless running around in it. And I think that's kind of the problem. No, is, there's a lot of fucking pointless always, running around. There, well, there's a po- lot of pointless running around, but if I see a mountaintop in the distance, and I spend the next 20 minutes getting to the top of it, there's something up there. Whether it's just a Korok leaf, or it's, you know, like an insanely powerful weapon, there's something. Uh, there's something and that's at the a top problem, of the mountain. Because I'm going to go on top uh, of Nick, that mountain. you should probably go to the beach and then start climbing mountains near the beach. So much shit. No. There's a very big thing. Okay. Bring a bow and arrow. Oh, God. Yeah, no, it's... it's The only gripe that I really have about it is the map is just way too fucking big. No. That's I, not a gripe. I would, I would love for the map to just be... Because, like, I would say Skyrim was sort of really walking the line of too big of a map that you have to do so much walking around on, and that's considering Morrowind's massiveness, but I never really had a problem oh, with it. You have so condensed. many fast travel points in Breath yes, of the Wild. Yes, Skyrim was you only can fast, fast travel, travel points. Yeah, Skyrim was all about fast travel, but there's so... I would say, like, 70% of possible travel in this game is not fast travelable. 
Like, all the little things hidden here and there. The rock on top of the mountain. Go to the side of yeah. the... Yeah. You can get within a 10-minute real-world time walk of it. But there's so much real-world time your spent horse? walking. Yeah, you need, like, 80 horses just scattered across Did the you world. Say, no, you motorcycle? can just call your horse. Only if you're so close to it, though. There is a maximum distance. Yeah, there is a maximum distance. So you I've need never, a lot of horses. Like, there's two things that I have done, and it's I've never gotten, like, so far away from my horse that I haven't been able to use it, based on, like, things, or I've just fucking flown. Yeah, then that does help, is, you know, the flying, you can bounce like, from objective to objective pretty nicely, but it, there's just, I would say most of, not most, but, like, 40% of my time spent on the game is just traveling. Yeah, that's how it's a fucking adventure, man. It's a that's lot not of in the it's not in the destination. It's in the journey. Go fucking walk to that top of the mountain. I'll point it out on your fucking Too map. I'll journey. tell you go to this mountain, have a fucking adventure, then go to the pit that's next to the mountain, have an adventure down there cuz there's also a fun time at that thing. But it's not like terribly upsetting cuz like I said, you spend your 20 minutes of in-world time or real-world time doing that thing. And there is something there. I have yet to waste a shit ton of time going somewhere and find that it was completely pointless. That has I not have. happened yet. I have. Only to find out I fucking missed the thing that was there. Oh. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Be on time. Be at the right time all the time. No, not even d not at just the right know. time. I just didn't fucking notice this tiny little snowball on these hills. Hmm. And, like, there's a snowball rolling puzzle where you have to roll a snowball all that shit. It's great. Mm. The okay. puzzles in it are fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, Zelda has been about puzzles, but never so much and so explicitly. So, except for the D I would say the puzzles feel like the DS Zelda games, because those were, like, heavy puzzles. Those were just wild. But, no, it's, it's awesome. The physics in this game is stupid and super fun. It's uh, through broken physics. One of the fastest way to travel is to just freeze a log, hit the living shit out of it, jump on top of it, and then rocket log. Make sure you're holding on, though. Rocket log. Make sure you're holding on. But no, yeah, so spectacular game. Not a 10 out of 10, but very high up. Love it. The DLC, the first one didn't really add anything worthwhile, so don't feel bad if you miss it. It's all just clothing. It, but the second DLC has a fun mode that's pretty pretty dope. The, the, and then you also can get a motorcycle. You can also get a motorcycle. Connor, you whip some, horses. If you want to whip some shitties out in the middle of Hyrule Field. <laughs> uh, my number one, unsurprisingly, XCOM 2 hey, War of the Chosen. I was right. I mean, we've spoken about it before. We've played a lot of it. we played a lot of it. A it's lot XCOM of it. 3. It's fucking amazing. That's like, no, XCOM to Enemy Unknown to Enemy Within was fucking... Was 1 to 2. Yeah, yeah. XCOM and 2 is XCOM 3, 3 and War of the Chosen is XCOM 4, yeah. Yeah, no, that's how it's happened. Yeah, and no, God, it's, I love playing XCOM 4. It's freaking fantastic, though. It, it, was, it was so insanely fun when so we were well. running it. I don't blame you at all. No, and it's, it's weird with XCOM because it's not, like completely changing the way the game is. Not to say it's the same game, but there's not a whole terrible amount of innovation uh, in the way you play the game. Right. But it always feels so fresh, so exciting. It's just great. Well, no, it's because it's tense. You can just, it's the tension. You can dump so much time into that game, and it feels great. Like, yeah, it's, it's one of the few games that you can just put time into and not feel bad when you realize how much time you wasted. Well, it's one of those games where you can dump time into and then realize, oh no, I re I like I fucking restarted this game because I forgot what I was doing in it, so I'm just gonna completely restart, make a new run, and then like months later you come back to it and it's like I need to restart and make a new run. <laughs> it's exactly how that XCOM enemy within went. That's for me. how Civilization and Endless Legend is for me. But with XCOM I'll actually go back to a playthrough I had maybe a year ago and It'll take me a minute, and then it'll click with where I was and what I was doing, and I'll finish that playthrough. It deserves it. <laughs> Are we ever going to go finish that one game where I went wild with the cultists on accident? We might, man. Oh, you ever fucking play in this legend again? Gotta love that game. It is. It's a, it's a great game. game. Yeah. It's a really good game. It's got some flaws. Hmm. They're not we major can flaws. those if it was a 2017 release, but it's <laughs> not. Okay. So we, we've gone through our personals. Okay. So, consensus, 
what was the game of the year? Breath of the Wild. I think we can all agree it was PUBG. Oh my god. It, I will murder you. Hey Nick, can you turn towards me real quick? Can we make I'm a new category to. called Shittiest Overwatch? Overwatch 1 2016, PUBG 1 2017? Yeah, just the game that Shittiest. had no place getting the game awards. A game that has no place fucking getting it's awards. It's not even... It fucking, the only no, reason this it is in another launched. league of it, doesn't deserve awards. This is a beta getting nominated for game of the year. No, it came out on the Xbox. No, I know. They forced it through so that they could say, "Hey, look, we nominate us." We came, it's a fucking it came game out mode. It's not on, a game. In December, on the Xbox, rushed of just a straight up fucking port that's not gonna get any support. Oh no, no, I feel bad for the Xbox players, and so many of them. I don't. Oh well, yeah, fucking idiots. If the time to feel bad for them was a long time ago. <laughs> that ship has sailed. Yeah, no, definitely not PUBG. But uh, yeah, for me, I I would say. Just Breath of the Wild is probably tippy top game. Personal opinion aside, I think it's just the best well crafted game of the year. It's got the most shit in it. It does have certainly the most shit. I didn't play a ball jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> Breath of the Wild. There's You've just... seen the art. When, You've heard you, the music. I'm not a huge fan of the art style. I yeah, love it. I, I I can agree to that. But like one of my favorite I don't things have any is. With it. There's so much in there. If you're walking around in a rainstorm or a thunderstorm and you accidentally have a piece of metal equipped, you you're going to get su struck by lightning. No, it's I've seen it's, like probably 60-70% of the content for the game. And it's an amazing game. I want to play it. I want to switch, like, but I haven't. And I'll be willing to give it... Just make a profile on Nyx. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's just a great, fantastic game. It's fucking. It's this is perfect. what a sandbox game and nobody should, should ever be. call it perfect. But yeah, no, it it just it's like combines... it took what Saints Row did for sandbox and blew it out of the water. It combines so many different things and does them all so spectacularly. But yeah, so that I think that's a pretty easy pick. What would you like to hop into uh, next? Uh, uh, Michael, let's... Michael, you let you get to get to do to do. So best single player. Best single player. Well, of course, so when you this, think single player... Now, this might not be the... Like, you might be assuming, oh, it's going to be Breath of the Wild because of one goatee, but we might be saying there's another game that was just a better single player experience mm -hmm. and not so much a better just game period. Yeah. When I think single player, I like to think story, dramatic moments, things getting fucking awesome. There's no fucking game better than Persona, Persona 5. 5. There we go. <laughs> That's that right. fucking ending sequence, which I will can't, we can't spoil. No, too big. Is too fucking outlandish. They took Persona's three endings and like, oh, how could we top that? They tried to top that. They kind of did, but not at the same scale. It's like, oh, I see them on the plateau way over there. That's not as high stakes over there. But still, it's fucking stellar. It's visually... The game itself is visually fulfilling for me. I love the art style, the sick-ass jazz, the music jazz. lines up, the fucking penis chariots are coming for you. All the enemies in the game... Are dicks. Are just... Like, you can penis. actually capture them. So, like, you don't see, like, random fucking enemies. No, they're actual monsters that you can have. They're like, you're fucking... Fun, you're just playing Pokemon with people. What's better than Pokemon? People Pokemon. People Pokemon! In a dating sim! Slavery in a dating sim. Slavery in a dating sim where you commit inception with your best friend who is a cat. And you then incept the thought into your teacher's mind that you need to give up fucking those underage girls. You gotta go to jail. <laughs> and then you make him want to kill himself, but not able to kill himself. Yeah. But that's a side effect. It happens. It's great. Um, I'm actually probably also going to have to give it to Persona... If it wasn't, though, if I were to get to pick another one, it would possibly be Mario Odyssey, but I still have too much gripe about it. I, I'm too gripey about that game. That's fair. Um, it was fantastically fun. Very well done. It was no galaxy. It was it was not even close for me. But uh, Do you know there's a second galaxy? <laughs> galaxy it wasn't as good as the first. Not nearly as good, but still very stellar. Uh, no... Space pun intended there. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably going to give it to Persona because I didn't play enough single-player games because I didn't have time to play single-player games. Uh, and I put most of my gaming time into multiplayer. That's fair. What are you? 
Uh, XCOM 2. Okay. Chosen. okay, that's that is fair. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's a heavily rewarding single player experience. It has some great moments in it, I'm sure. When you fucking fight the teleporty bitch and actually kill her. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> the payoff, or the the feeling of reward when something dies and stays died is so real. Accurate. When things stay died is always nice. When things die, but then normally they come back or run away, but they just stay dead. That's like, uh, my kink. It's like a uh, Shadow of War. It's so nice when they just stay died. It's so nice in Shadow of War when people don't come back for the tenth time complaining about your their fucking face. Or when they disappear for like... Ever. Four parts. <laughs> then they come, come back, back out of the fucking blue and just, oh shit, moments happen. Oh, glorious. What was your multiplayer, Connor? My best multiplayer was Neo. Does that qualify? Yes, it does. Technically, there it, was multiplayer. There it, was multiplayer. It did have multiplayer. Uh, there, were, there were issues with the connection and lobby that I yeah, have with that. Minor issues. Nothing compared to Dark Souls, like, PvP-wise. It, when it was in normal story mode, but when you're in straight up multiplayer mode, the multiplayer was interesting, to say the most. I really enjoyed it. Because I didn't have you any... you share a fake health bar. Yeah. If you go down, the health bar starts draining, and the person can resurrect you. And then if you go down again, it drains a lot, and then it starts going down. And then if you die a third time, it's just straight up gone. I didn't have as much fun playing multiplayer with any, anywhere as near as much fun as I did with Neo this year. Well, it's because uh, Overwatch is bad now. Overwatch was bad last year, and I said that then. <laughs> um... I'm going to go with anything that wasn't PUBG. But uh, Just to, blanket statement. Blanket if you weren't PUBG, you were the best multiplayer in 2017. <laughs> you know yeah. what game that includes? Final Fantasy XIV. It, it, it <laughs> Good job, Nick. Good job. <laughs> you piece of shit. No, I would give it to uh, Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle because it's just Did stupid. You play it? and it's Is fun. there multiplayer in that? Yeah. It's fun. What's the fucking oh, multiplayer? Wait. I changed my mind. Hidden Agenda. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, God. All right. All right. No. That's not a... That's It's multiplayer. You can't play it alone. You cannot. Oh, God. <laughs> What's got you so upset, Sluggish? I don't know. Maybe just, like, how... I feel like there's host advantage on that game. Or something. Go on. Because, like, you, you do an action. Okay. And you don't get the action done. Because I was fucking, like, waggling my finger all over that monitor trying to do those QTEs. Nothing happened. Oh, no, but yeah. The QTEs are a little funky. No, the one that was killing me is to do your uh, overtake, it wasn't push the overtake symbol. It was push the freaking <laughs> number next to it. And it never says to do that. There are some so problems. we're all just yeah. mashing the overtake. No, the, the phone interface is kind of clunky, but... Which is half the game. Wait, I mean, but... Okay, can you play Hidden Agenda... Controller, if it's one person, no, no, it you has have to be to use on the Sony Play Link. I enjoyed fuck it. off. I enjoyed it so fucking. Can we much. just okay? So again, this is just this is just until dawn. But they tried to make it so you can make choices together. Until dawn was a fun game to as like the three of us sit on the couch, one person control, and just it was that that oh, was a good yeah. experience. But this made it to where all of you are playing, and it just added so much more infighting, and it's great. It wasn't even so much infighting as people started Actually, accusing people of things that didn't matter, because the points don't fucking matter. We were pretty I nice. I won, yeah. bitches. We, we were pretty nice players, to be perfectly... I feel like a lot of people would be a lot more like, kill your friends and win... But we, we were pretty friends. buddy about it. Judy, kill your family! We didn't try any, like, crazy weird games. But, uh, no, it, it was... Like, I, I think that it was a fantastic time around, hidden agenda, hours. it'll be better. Well, next time, maybe you guys won't vote stupid and we'll actually play the game. Maybe we'll see the last possible you 20 fuckers, minutes. You killed the guy in the parking garage. Killed the booty. You killed the booty. You Don't killed kill the booty. stupid judge. That one made sense. Yeah, that he needed to. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mail. Yes. FF14. FF14 was my best multiplayer of the game. Uh, basically, here's a rundown of what multiplayer is in that game. You play as a healer uh -huh. who hates everybody. Okay. And then you straight up just tell them, you live and die by my hand. And that's all you say when you start a dungeon run. And if anybody dies, you just shout, just all caps, only by my hand and resurrect them. That's how oh, that goes. Alright. Do you make them buy reses? I wish I could. Reses. I wish I could. I I might actually start charging people in my <laughs> guild for reses before, from now on. Before the dungeon begins, you have to give me so much to guarantee that you will get revived should anything happen. Should I use the rescue ability, which is an ability that pulls people to your location, but there's a couple seconds delay between where they are and when they move, so you can move out of the danger zone that you just tethered them into. Mm -hmm. So if you want to intentionally kill someone, oh, go fucking ahead. You've got a... It's only a 120 second cooldown. Kill your friends. Kill your friends! FF14, kill yep. your friends. FF14, kill your friends, lose your family. You're bad people. I am bad person. Yes. What had the best music, Connor? Best soundtrack, Pyre. I didn't really listen to Pyre all that much. Stellar soundtrack. Hmm. Stellar. I mean, Bastion, obviously, and Transistor were just amazing, and Supergiant kept it up with Pyre. It wasn't as quality as either of those two, but it was still good. Yeah, I honestly didn't have all that much interest in Pyre. Like, I saw it as a game, and I'm like, I'll play, like, three rounds of this, and then I'm done. I have all the Super Giant games, and I've put so little time into any of them. Personally, I feel like I you should I do. like start with Bastion, oh, yeah. then do Transistor, and then like play a couple games of sports ball every now and then with Pyre. I don't game. listen to enough music, um, so I'm going to give it to Pyre just so I'm not giving it to Persona 5, which is uh, Michael's. Actually, if not Pyre, it would technically be Nier's. Oh. Yeah, Nier had a really good soundtrack. I'm going to give it up for Nier. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it up for Nier, because, yeah. If it wasn't for yeah. the fucking acid jazz of Persona 5, Nier would have gotten it for me. Yep. So it was Persona 5 for Michael. It was Persona 5, because that jazz. jazz. Yeah. yeah. It's all about that jazz. It's the reason he's addicted to Persona, is the jazz. Fucking jazz. When, like, a third of the music in three of your games is just fucking jazz, you have me. You've got me by the ball, Atlas. Dixon Jazz. Name of the game. Yeah. Dixon Jazz. Alright, so I think we are down to our last two categories now. Mm hmm. So, what was Michael's biggest uh, No Man's Sky this year? Okay. So, there's one that started it. Okay. And it started kind of the curtail, and that was For Honor. Okay. Yeah, For I was Honor was a fucking that. mess. At launch, and they never fucking fixed it. They just they gave actually, up on that game. They they had like that first tournament where someone abused a glitch in the game to beat the game and mm -hmm. win the tournament. And the developers like, you're not gonna do this next time we have this tournament. They haven't had that other tournament because they just gave up on the game. Yep. They so just like For Honor failed. was one of those games where it just killed itself. So much potential because it, they fucking had a tournament and they killed themselves. Then you go off and you have something like Mass Effect Andromeda. Where it kills a franchise. It's hard to do, too. That is really hard to do. Assassin's to Creed has had bad games. But it's still alive. It's still fucking alive. Despite many bad games. So many bad So games. many PSP games. The so PSP many. one, the first PSP one was good. It was. The but there's one. too many games, yeah. and not many of them are quality. There's too many games in the Assassin's Creed kitchen. So I was glad that they just... Took a couple years. What, so, Connor, I now it. have to, like, ask, what's the fuck? I'm just over here basking in my righteousness, hearing about you bitch about stuff that was evident to the naked eye. Yeah. I, I am just getting off on this. You didn't think like, For Honor was going to be For Honor or, met you, expectations of shit. It was a Ubisoft title, first and foremost. That's fair. That explains any problems. That's fair. Secondly... When the beta released and what all gameplay trailers were shown up until release, you knew the product you were getting. Anybody who was disappointed with game at launch was an idiot. I didn't play the beta. And I, I didn't no, here's watch my thought gameplay. On this. I actually just watched cinematics. You I'm not disappointed with the gameplay. Potential. 
I'm disappointed with it because every single fucking mechanic just doesn't work together. Yeah. They've got a parry system that doesn't work with the blocking system, that doesn't work with the combat, that doesn't work with the stamina management. So, it's a cluster. everything by itself is fine. If you just take it by itself, the pieces are fine. And that's probably you, how like, look at the it. Lego monstrosity <laughs> that they put together, and you're just kind of sitting there like, wait, but this isn't Tricky Towers. This <laughs> doesn't work. They're just like, hey, do some QA on the block system. Works great. Do some QA on the parry system. Works great. Game's good. Let's launch it. Do some uh, QA on what happens if you try to parry and then go back into a defensive stance. Can, can You can't. What? <laughs> Game crashed. <laughs> I'm curious what yours is, because mine's boring. What's what's Connor's biggest No Man's Sky? Uh, my biggest No Man's Sky was actually probably the actual No Man's Sky this year, was Battlefront 2. And that's what I was expecting for your, yeah. Because I know you wanted it so bad, and you still well, want it so I, bad. And yeah, no, there's a lot of stuff with that. It's, for honor, you could clearly see it was going to be a bad game. Andromeda, no, Michael, you're wrong on this, and I will argue this, and you will be wrong and sit in your I have this. fucking sat there and said, I'm not going to buy this because it's just going to be bad. That entire no, fucking No, you said you, didn't get, you weren't going to buy it because you were still salty about Battlefront 1. That's you a were. completely and different And I didn't argument. get back Because, like, I'm done with first-person shooters because they are just a rinse and repeat of the same fucking game before. And they don't improve any fucking well, yeah, thing. Yeah, that's been the past five years. That's not. And that's really. why I'm done with first-person shooters. The only first-person shooter I've touched since then was Rainbow Six Siege, and that's because it's slightly innovative. So you were already off of it, just off of its genre alone. Yeah, I not was off based of on anything on the actual game. I just looked what at it, it was. and I just didn't care for it. It looked exactly the fucking same. But did oh, you think it was going to be trash? Like, yes. Disappointing. Yes. Biggest controversy on the planet. Not trash. biggest. Tro con not as big as a controversy as it fucking was. But I figured it was just going to be a bad game. Okay. I figured it was going to be at least worse than like Call of Duty World War Two. There's the thing. It's not a bad game. It's not. That's. It I is will not agree a bad game. That. The gameplay is phenomenal. You buy the game, you play it. It is a good game. I've enjoyed every second I've put into the game. In a vacuum. Fantastic. Just game to game, ignoring literally everything that isn't in Avoiding, gameplay. just ignoring the progression system. Ignoring progression systems, ignoring, ignoring items, lobby, equipments. Um, yeah. Equ okay. yeah ev literally everything. Playing the game. So good. The progression system isn't even actually that trash anymore. They fixed it, but not nearly no, enough. No, no, not nearly enough. Until they basically... And I can't say... Defending that that they've solved the problem, they never. Well, it's a no man's sky because it is almost one for one what happened with no man's, the huge controversy and the letdown and the loss of money on the product. I personally am still happy with the game. It's a lot of fun to play. I have some friends that play it. I'm happy a with lot. the purchase. But Did you pick it up when it was on sale some, for thirty dollars? Uh, forty at discount for like thirty six or something. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, and, and under forty, it's not under a bad forty. Investment. It was worth. Yeah, it. under forty dollars, then then it's a good game. You got your free DLC too. Uh, the two people who. Are yeah, coming, yeah. Um, if you played during the last Jedi season, um, the first thing they had was you got two free heroes, and they added new map and stuff like that. But yeah, no, horrendously mishandled. We've it talked about it enough mishandled. on the podcast. I was. It was actually. There's a whole cast about it. <laughs> because we, you were talking about how the Dark Souls as a genre conversation was there, but it didn't really peak and until. explode until Neo. The loot boxes as a problem conversation has been there, but it did not mount St. Helens until Battlefront 2. Yeah. And that has completely actually changed the industry and its perspective on loot boxes. And it no might actually forward have... forward will be the same because of Battlefront 2. It, depending how legal things go, no game backwards will be the same either. Some pe some that, are going to retroactively be changed because of now legal they precedent. Just can, Blizzard can afford it. They can afford whatever Blizzard fine and fees and whatever. They're set... But uh, I know a lot of companies won't be able to pay the weird Denmark gambling fee, and they won't be able to deal with the fact that now people under 17 can't buy their game and all that weird shit. I'm, I'm interested. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but on the off chance that it does go somewhere for the legal aspect, it's going to be weird. Yeah. 
I can't wait for Hand of Fate 2 to have uh, loot boxes. I'll support it. <laughs> yeah, that Hand game... of Fate 2 deserves loot boxes. Hand Where were loot boxes in the first one? Exactly. I didn't bought them. I didn't bought them. I, we would have fucking bought the real game if they had loot boxes. Yeah, we would have. <laughs> yeah, damn, I love that game. It's oh. it's so bad. Why do bad games have loot boxes and games that need them don't? No, we're saying that bad games need loot boxes. Bad games need no, loot no, boxes. No, the games that don't need them have them, but the games that don't need them don't have them. I don't know what I'm saying. No, no, no. It's no. okay. That's Hand of Fate it, doesn't it. need loot boxes. It Which deserves loot boxes. It deserves, boxes. deserves, it deserves boxes. your money. It does. If you go onto like PSN or Xbox Live right now and you go to Hand of Fate, you will see, I want to say, one of the best free games I've gotten. Just I want... I want that to be an option where there's, uh, like, loot boxes for only if you just really want to give them money. They don't do anything. You mean, like, a like donation? Just, it's just, like, a donation in-game system, and it has, like, a box, and the box has an effect. Nothing happens, but you get to just give them money. I feel like that's what you do with EA nowadays. It's yeah. like, real devs, like, Supergiant just opens a Patreon. Just, hey, yeah. if you want to give us money... They, for anything, we'll take it. That's no, what this is. Like, I feel like that's what they would do. And it's like, well, once a month, we'll have our lead, uh, we'll have uh, our music, our musician team, oh, our God. music team put out a new track or something. That'd be so great. Studios that deserve money need Patreons. Yeah. Ghibli. They have money. Well, they don't have when enough money. When is he going to die? Um, well, S shortly before he retires. Shortly after. No, he no, 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 then he'll make one more. That's what, I, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. He will be dead. They will string up his corpse <laughs> like a la Week and have Bernie's and have him in there. He's going to have a pre-set up where post-mortem he strings himself via <laughs> some computer system. It's actually they are having to live under the tyranny of a dead body. <laughs> I like to imagine he's going to pre-record his instructions for an entire it's, movie yeah. with a series of like possible responses. So they say, hey, I want to do this. And they put a punch card in a machine. And then a little video pulls up of him and he's just like, no. <laughs> and then it goes back down. But how about food? <laughs> Where's the food in this scene? Just on the overhead every ten minutes. Better food. Better, Better food. food. Better food. Um, you work harder. Take less breaks. Better food. <laughs> so, so what was your uh, your biggest no man's sky? My honorable mention, and this is being nuts harsh, but my honorable mention is Odyssey. Because uh, I just, I'm okay, griping no, as can, shit yeah. about that game. No, it did not deliver expectations. I, uh, so it, it's fantastic to play. The, the innovation in it like, taking over certain things, the different puzzles that you do because of it, so fun. So fun. And I loved it. And I was like, this is new. This is weird. This is different. That dragon. Holy shit, that dragon. And then it's over. That, that's about 18 hours is that new whole New Donk City sequence. You, for, you forgot to mention that. New that New Donk City sequence is possibly one of my favorite sequences in any Nintendo game and probably will be for a very long time because that end mission is 11 out of 10. Just absolutely breathtaking. But the game... I, I've seen... So Speedruns are clocking in at like a handful of hours. Because it only takes 108 stars to beat, I think. 108 moons uh, out of a possible 999. Uh, and I finished it with like two... I always change this number. It's somewhere in like the 200 teens. But... Uh, I was just doing it because I wanted to keep playing. Like, you would get so far in the game, and then you're like, holy shit, it feels like I'm moving way too fast. I want to really savor this. So, like, oh, I'll do a little bit of a... I'll go back three worlds, and I'll start doing my completionist run now and doing little so, things. And so like you have to force to stretch out the time in it. This it's is so kind short. of a similar issue that Zelda has, but Zelda's is better paced. Mm. Because Zelda's a really short game. You if can you literally just, walk. Yeah, if you aggro it, yeah. You if can you get just, through it real. Like, well, I mean, speed it's the same of, thing with Skyrim. Yeah. yeah Skyrim, exactly. this is the exact same suit. It's an open, world, open game, world game. And you can, and you just didn't explore enough. Of, you just went hard through the story. And then if you, you just, short. yeah, if you, you are, dealt with the difficulty. You are a video game journalist right now. You literally burned through the game. What's Mad Cats? Yeah. 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 
That's exactly who you fucking are. No, no, I spent you just, my you're time. You're the guy who sat there. No, I you spent play, you a lot down of time on Odyssey. Odyssey. You had your Mad Cats controller in your hand, and you're like, no, you said, what's that, Mad where did I get this from? What, what is Mad Cats? I'm not familiar with their product. Fuck Game Informer. Fuck Game Informer. Fuck Fire Ubisoft. your reporter. Fuck yay. Fuck God, that. God damn it. It's a whole thing. There's a, there's a Game Informer article about Mad Cats coming back, and the author of the article said, I'm not familiar with their product. What Game Informer always has an editor's note of who ran the article, and this guy was like, I don't know what Mad Cats is, but I'm excited to see what they'll deliver. I hope they change their business strategy so that they don't fail like their predecessor. Mad Bitch, Cats. Mad Cats didn't fail. You failed them. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's just, I put in twice as much time into the game, and then I played a lot of the late game. I've tried the impossible mode. Uh, you know, I went back and I got probably a little over half of the stars i got to yeah i got to the over 500 mark i think i'm in like the low 600s um i really appreciate the toadette achievement system that's really fun um and i just i enjoy playing it but i'll be goddamned if it's not maybe an eight hour game tops that should have been so much more and i don't know if it's because i'm just comparing it to galaxy and to How a lesser long extent galaxy? to Look, what was the time to beat? I have a beat? distorted... So... I, I'm going to go to timetobeat.com, yeah. and I'm going to look up Super Mario Galaxy. How long did it take you to beat Galaxy? I want to say it was a really long time. Probably at least two to three times of what I put into Odyssey. The difference, though, is Galaxy's pacing. And I think that's the biggest problem. Is If, if not the fact that it's an eight-hour game doesn't even feel like that because this there's no story to it it's here's a thing go do the do i did the do go do the do i did the do go do the do you save the princess galaxy had this like beautiful storybook backstory woven into things it made you stop for a moment and sort of just take in what was going on here and there and it just felt so much more stretched out where this game it felt like sit down get the star sit down get the star go Okay, so... I'm gonna guess it was probably only nine. Super Mario Odyssey on Time to Beat is 11 and a half hours. Super Mario Galaxy is 15 hours. See, and I would have thought it was like 22 if Odyssey was 11. See, because they're doing Super like... Mario Odyssey is at 22 hours for the main plus extra yeah. stuff. Not just pure speedrun. Whereas uh, Super Mario Galaxy was clocking at like 45 or 25 and a half hours. So there's not much difference... I think that you just went for a completionist run of Galaxy instead. No, I did I, I did the post story for Galaxy, and I'm still sitting at 119 I, No, that's stars. not completionist. Com post story isn't completionist. Post, no, like, the, completionist the, is no, fucking everything. That is the post story for Galaxy, is going back and getting all of the stars. That's all okay. you can do, is just go back and get all the stars. Uh, which I'm at 119 out of 120 forever. So, like, that's 45 hours. That's what they said. For Gal Odyssey, they said it was around 30, 35 which would sound right. The problem is that with Galaxy, you went into these missions, kind of like, uh, you know, 64, you had yeah. the paintings, and it was a whole mission dedicated to this. And with Odyssey, it's like, hey, there's a star on a rock. Figure it out. No, just walk up and you got it. Hey, there's a glowy bit on the ground. Like, so many are just given to you that the 999 is a completely arbitrary. It could have been 20,000, it could have been 500. It just depends just, where they, they could have just replaced coins. Yeah, they just flung them in. They could have just replaced coins and then used, like, bigger coins. And some of them are so great. If there was, like, 500 moons, and they just put more thought into the 200 that are just kind of weird, it would be so good. How old were you when you played Galaxy? Oh, fuck, don't ask that. I don't know. Like, 12, 12? 13? Probably 12, 13. How much better are you at video games nowadays? Platformers, probably about the same. Okay. Yeah. Because I was about to say, maybe it's just older Nick being better at video games and getting through the game faster no. and being able to solve the puzzle better and do better. In fact, I, if anything, I had to spend more time on this because I didn't have the just infinite the free time. That too. I didn't just have the option to get home at 2 and play Odyssey until 4 a.m. and then go but to no, school. No, like, that wouldn't change the amount of time that you, put, that you put into the game. Connor gets it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I I had to like space it out because other things were in the way, and it just 
So speaking of things that I never too had much time played a game to, where I felt like I I'm gonna like go I look up what's the time to beat Dota 2, Connor, and then you try it. Move on to most anticipated 2018. Uh, oh wait, that was my honorable mention. Oh, my yeah, actual so you're, one. So your real biggest No Man's Sky. Um, it's probably either Ukulele or Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. I was mad disappointed with it. I enjoyed I the shit out of it for a for week. Both of those. I enjoyed the shit out of it for like the first handful of days. And then it was a mobile game. It Animal just, Pocket. Animal Crossing. Mer- barely, camp. barely dipped below my expectations. But it seemed to me that everyone else's expectations were double mine. I didn't have... I expected it to be the DS version watered down by like 60%. And honestly, it is practically a point and click. Like, it, it's just a clicker game. The way the motions run, there's just... It was so... No, right. I would rather go back to Abyssrium, Tap Tap Fish, or you Tap should. Tap Fish Abyssrium. You, you I need should. friends because so I, I felt get gifts. I felt more rewarded, literally just flicking my screen <laughs> passively for hours on end, than after the third or fourth day no, of man. Uh, Pocket Camp. You gotta watch those vids to lower the cooldowns on your shrimp explosions. So many hours on the Bis Room videos. I didn't think it was gonna be like an amazing, crazy game, but I thought it would at least be able to capture my attention. It's for more a than mobile a few days. game. That's Just go. So is Duel Links. Duel Links, motherfucker. Duel Links is like barely a mobile game. That's like no. Like, it's a hard <laughs> mobile game. It's Duel so Links mobile. and Hearthstone are the two things that I were about to call out as being like the least mobile game games. They're the most mobile game games. No, I would say they no. Define Links. mobile games. You don't fucking. Tap platform. the screen endlessly. No, that's that's different. I sure do. That's tap tap fish. That's a oh, fucking mobile game. Dueling to the speed up that duel, man. I'm fucking <laughs> tapping that screen like this. Auto duelist is too slow. Yeah, oh, they God. spend all the time on the animations. I gotta fucking speed through that. Honestly, you know you I can disable half of those. I don't want be... to. I want to drain my battery. So they want it. So I don't want to cap this like tap. I don't get to cap the screen so they can get through all the animations. But I'm not gonna disable the animations. I like having them. And choosing to remove them. I want a hyperspeed <laughs> auto duelist where you click auto duel and it, it just, just tells results. you win or lose. And it just immediately runs the. But no, I like auto duel because you can turn it off and then no. solve the issues. No, I'm saying I want another one where it just tells me it's win or super lose. Auto-duel. Push your button, win or lose. Push your button, win or lose. Why game? bother playing the game? Because that would help me with my. That's grind. literally like pushing a button and it just says winner and then like little Nick standing there going. Yeah, I play the game because it has great events. And Little sometimes Nick. I like playing Nick, but not Michael. <laughs> <laughs> when me and That's Connor fair. play, it's, hey, I built this plant deck. Hey, I built this elemental hero deck. This'll be weird. When it's Michael, it's like, hey, Get fuck fucked. you. Yeah, it's just... I build not fun we can, decks. We can Stick play punch. my Ojama deck. You build punch. not fun decks. I'll play your Ojama fun. deck. It sounds like it's your most... You don't play jank. You play competitive. Ojama's jank. No, Ojama's jank. It's Ojama's jank. jank. No, it's still jank, and I love it. In any case, <sighs> so that was your real uh, biggest No Man's Sky. Yeah, Moving I just on bummed. So most anticipated 2018, we have Michael with Monster Hunter World. Yeah. It's the people's choice. Yep. Yeah. Fair. Fair. He's just, he's right all about that. I have actually requested three days off of work for this game. I respect that. No, because yeah. that's what I did with Arkham Knight way back when. No, yeah. No, I, I, if you were going to do it for any game, I would expect it to be this. Like, so. Persona 5, I didn't need to put take time off. No. Because, like, okay, I can't, I can't just sit there for hours on end reading dialogue. I'm going to need to take a break. Monster Hunter fucking world. Wait. I can <laughs> fucking, I, I swear to God, I think I probably spent... This is on a school day. Yeah. Yeah. 13, 14 hours playing Monster Hunter. At school, playing Monster Hunter. All I can say is it's a good thing this game is not portable. Yes. Or you would be fucked. Here's the thing, though. If I get a Vita again... Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. Don't let him get a Vita. We won't see him. I still want a Vita. <laughs> you can v- get a Vita. Buy the last Vita before he can get it. I'll have to rebuy the fifth one, yeah. yeah. And he won't be able to. The other one's in a museum. The other one's in Japan. <laughs> there are two in Russia. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so your biggest, uh, most anticipated title, 2018? Um, Nino Kuni 2, actually. Which I think was my most anticipated last year, which was really upsetting. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm actually fairly confident my most anticipated last year was Nino Kuni yeah. 2. Uh, but yeah, no. Watch last year's Goatee video to listen to why, because I'm sad. 
He said, "I fucking love Nino Cooney." Yeah, it's like maybe for as many problems. This and might as, like, actually kill him. As wide open of just so many things wrong with Nino Cooney. I fucking. Love it just that reminds game. me of Final Fantasy VIII. It's so Final Fantasy. It, no, Final Fantasy VIII because the fucking actually, you have to harvest the materia things out of the enemies. I would say, like in a lot of ways, it felt super thirteeny for me. But I think it was just because I played it like right after thirteen. And that experience... It, no, that like, you, yeah, you can't play anything after... Thir- 13 was a hard killer. 13-2 yeah. was slightly better. 13-3 was just Oops. Bayonetta, but with Dress Spheres, like kind of. 13-3 is 10-2. I find that, that video game breasts are better. <laughs> you should go play 10-2 and then 13-3. Or no, the Senran, I'm not touching Final Fantasy. Any of the Senran Kagura games. Actually, yeah, no, go play Senran. We, I'm... I... I feel like you and I need to play Sunron Kagura. Ooh. Ooh. You know what needs to exist? A Keijo game. Like a fighter, except it's a sport game, and you play through it. How have they not made that? What the fuck is he talking Keijo. Your weird boob in the Oh, no. No, that's because you can't. You can't fucking make that into a Oh, you can. Uh, it's Kaiju, yeah. It would be the like a... fucking uh... game where you can only fight women on the... It, you said uh, they're in swimsuits and they're standing in like a pool. Oh, and it's only yeah. rest and butt combat. Yeah. His booty and butt combat. I still combat. need to play or that. Booty and boob. Yeah. Yeah, he's, it's on your uh, streaming services at your local blockbuster. But, yeah, uh, go to your local blockbuster. Yeah. Make sure you're wearing a hoodie so they don't recognize you. And then say, I would like the tits and ass. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just, <laughs> Give me them one anime titties. One tits and ass, please. <laughs> one anime titty, please. It'd be like a. Uh, Budokai Tenkaichi game. It would be like a it really, really weird fighter. I want it to be a Budokai Tenkaichi. I want the people who made Budokai Tenkaichi yeah. to make the Kaijo game. That would be fantastic. They should do it. That needs to exist now. Connor, what are you looking forward Most to? Most anticipated 2018. If I were Michael's to... going to have an opinion about this, but he's wrong again. So it's not Monster Hunter then? No, no, no. It isn't because it's Kingdom Hearts 3. It's oh. not coming out. It is. No, Michael. Because... Disney fucking announced it. Not Square Enix. Oh. Because Disney, last year, when yeah. I spoke about it, at their expo, announced the 2018 Yeah, it wasn't state. even at E3. It was That's at the why D- it's going to be 2018. D4? Disney stepped the fucking D23. D23. It was at D23. They stepped in and announced its release date. That means it's coming out. It's so, on a yeah, Disney no, if, deadline if, now. if it's on a Disney deadline, it's that means that no matter deadline. how shitty the game is, it's coming, it's coming out. out. For better or for worse, it's on for a Disney deadline. For better or for worse, you're going to get Kingdom Hearts 3 and then Ken- Kingdom Hearts 3 Enemy Within. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it, man. <laughs> you know, at this point, any Kingdom Hearts will do it. Because you got Kingdom Hearts 2.8 and that's like, we need money to keep making the game, guys. It's that's just, honestly what that felt like. It felt like a mid-production Kickstarter. It's going to be so much. They spent so much money on that game, and it was essentially an in-engine tech demo that they got, like, they basically were paid to make a beta. Honestly, if if Kingdom Hearts 3 hadn't been, you know, hard announced by Disney, I'd be like, oh, 2019, and it'd easily be Monster Hunter World. Like, they could announce XCOM 3 this year, another fucking Middle Earth, or like Civ 7, or Endless Legend 2. And Monster Hunter World would have it for me, but because it's Kingdom Hearts 3 with a guaranteed 2018 release, I can't not. So, I've got one no- honorable nomination for this. Okay. That is Persona Cross Street Fighter, or Persona Cross Guilty Gear oh. Cross Ruby. There we go, that makes more sense. I was like, Street, no. Oh, yeah. That monstrosity. Ooh, that's that's gonna much- be a mess. That's too much IP. <laughs> that's so much fucking mess. But None of them have any... Well, one of them has Disney... No, no. You know, Guilty Gear doesn't even have any business being a fighter. All right, so... Guilty to, Gear can die. To wrap know, it up... Okay well, yeah, they haven't made a fucking Guilty Gear game because everybody else has been paying the money to make their own game. The people... They're making the Dragon Ball Z game. And, like, six... This is the same company that's making Dragon Ball Z and all these other fighters. They're also making this in their spare time. They are making four different fighting games this year. Well, as long as Rooster Teeth isn't involved with the, uh, yeah, the funding of the game, we should be good. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> God. Uh, biggest No Man's Sky 2017. Ruby combat board ready. game. Oh, actually. The Combat Ready Kickstarter. Combat Ready Kickstarter. Indivisible's got a 2018 release, I think. Are you choosing that over Monster Hunter World? No, you're no. not. Then, that's just, that's <laughs> just another thing I'm throwing out there. Stop throwing stuff out there. We chose a one... 
<laughs> Most anticipated. No honorable mentions. It's, it's, it's Monster Hunter World, it's Nino Kuni 2, and it's Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, Hearts 3. 3. All so of these... Spectrum. Well, we, for better, probably for worse, I accept this. And for better or for worse. It's one way or the other. It, it's either going to like be shit hits the fan in a good way or the bad way. Shit's hitting the fan regardless. Yeah. But, yeah. No, this game is going to be... It's going to be caught or shit. It's just going to... It, it'll, it'll be yeah. a full frontal game is what it's oh, going to yeah. be. I'm ready for it. Do you know what I'm ready for? Hmm. This podcast to be over. The Moisty Awards 2017 Game Woo! of the Year, Breath of the Wild. Congratulations. Congratulations, Nintendo. For um, having so little competition. If you want to <laughs> you can have any of Sean's presents. Yeah, uh, hey, Nintendo. Just hit us up and ask for our friend's birth, or uh, Christmas present. Add presents. us on one, Twitter, two, three, and then... Four, just one through six, pick, like, three Roll numbers. a dice. Hey, everybody. Roll a d If you want to enter to win one of Sean's presents, what you got to do is you got to go on to Twitter... And tweet Konami where the anime where titties. Where are the Duel Links anime titty sleeves? Tweet that, and we'll probably give you one of Sean's presents because he doesn't want them. <laughs> he doesn't want them. His parents. Nintendo don't want doesn't them. want them, but we'll ship them to you. You don't know what Nintendo wants. We don't actually. Money. Nintendo's. A, they want more. They want more. medical supplies. They do. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, that's. They do. But thank you for listening, and uh, we'll uh, hear you again. You'll hear us again. Maybe we'll hear you. You don't know what kind of cameras we got. Whoop.